Hello, it's Sarah and Kiwi. Um, so I'm back, and we're gonna see how far I can get on this today. It may not. It may take a couple more uh, sessions before I can finish it, because there is a lot to do. Um, I did just post another base coating video because I just wanted to share how. Well, you'll see it if you if you watch that. You'll see how I got to this point. Um, but I do want to just review. In order to get started on the shading and highlighting, you're going to need to take your tracing and just add, I'll come down and show you, just add the um, guidelines for, I'm missing one right here, and you'll see me do this sometimes too, I just use my pencil, but there's a line here. I don't even need to put it on because I could just do it with my, um, my brush. It's a little crooked. Let me see, the lighting in here is not good with, see this goes up, so I will fix that. And the other thing is, um, you don't want these too dark. So, like, I'm kind of going to just soften some of them on this, uh, on the hat. Just soften them up, because if you do paint over them, you won't be able to get them off. So just the lighter the better. They're just there as an indication of where you want to go with your floating. This was penciled on, so I'm just going to remove that. I'm just lightening them up a little bit. And this is just a, I don't know, number or whatever pencil eraser, you know. So I really want those not to show at the end. And then this was super crooked. Okay. I traced on the cookies, the word cookies, the stars. Um... So we'll see what we have going on today. I think I'm going to follow her directions from top to bottom. So uh, instead of doing it my way, which I kind of do like because, like, say, all right, if we're doing the gingerbread, like, if I'm using the same color, it's kind of, it's, it's more efficient for me to use that color for all the places. So I will end up, I'll end up jumping around. I can't promise. All right. Um, what else do I want to say? Hopefully my head won't get in the shot. I did notice my head getting in the shot. For floating, floating is the technique that I use uh, to shade and highlight. I use palette paper. Let me go back up. I'm sorry. Palette paper. And you can get this at the art in the art section of your craft store. Palette, paper palette, it says. Um, and it's just like a, a shiny surface that you can load your brush. You're going to need some paper towels and your angle brushes. I'm going to try this half inch squirrel today. I got this uh, when I bought a few brushes when I was doing Tracy Moreau last year for the um, Random Act of Kindness, which I have not done this year. It's been a different year this year, huh? I'll tell you. Um, Okay, and of course your Q-tips, going to need Q-tips because in case you want to take anything off. Um, and your water bucket. So I'm going to just start here at the top where it says gingerbread undercoat. We did that. We're going to shade with burnt sienna. Then it says deepen the shading with burnt umber and the cheeks with country red. Okay, and then stipple the lightest area with honey brown. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is some burnt sienna. My favorite brown. I should have got it out and been sitting here ready to go. Always shake your paint. Get all that good stuff mixed around. And I'm just going to put out a little spot of it. You only need a tiny bit when you're floating. That much. Tiny bit on my palette. And you need paper towels because you blot. So I'm in my water bucket. I'm just loading the brush with water. I just got it very wet and now I'm going to blot and let just let the paper towel suck the water out but there's still water in the bristles. They're, they're moist. Then I'm going to corner load the brush so I just take the pointy end of that. I'm going to take a little more because then I put it down on my palette paper over here. I'm going to try and get this. I'm going to just load my brush over here for a minute. So I have a corner load. Now it's an angle brush, so I don't want to just be up 
on that tip I want all the bristles on the surface so I need to hold my brush at, at an angle to get the angle and I just start to push and I'm I'm kind of walking back and forth can you see that I put it down over here then I go up I never want paint to touch this side of the bristles though only this side and then what happens is I have paint to a little bit less paint the paint kind of floats across the bristles to just water over here and I'm gonna do it again because this I need it I don't know I just like to do it I'm just gonna rinse it go into water I'm sorry blot corner load put the paint down over there and walk away then walk back into it that's how I load my brush I flip it and then when I go to my piece so I have plenty of water when I come to my piece I'm just double checking where I want to go let's just put some down his little arm right here I put all the bristles on the surface the paint goes up against that I definitely pity pat don't I and then you can also use a mop brush if you feel like you can only mop if there's water there if there's no water there the paints not going to move but you can pull the paint up into the water if it if it kind of stopped or sometimes I'll even push it back if my if my float is too strong all right so look you see how it kind of looks darkest up against the, the gingy and then it fades out that's the effect you're trying to get when you do this technique okay so I'm gonna do that all over this gingerbread man we're gonna go up against his other arm again I just corner load go right back where I was I just keep loading my brush in the same place this squirrel is a little thicker it's more fat like this way um, it's okay I'm just not used to it but it does all brushes can do the work and it's not splitting it's whole the water is holding the bristles together that's a good cue that your brush is doing um, what you want it to do so I'm gonna again stick the corner of where am I good I'm in the I put the paint I'm gonna end up switching brushes because this one just feels I don't know if I'm, it's just not broken in. Hi, Kiwi. And the shine just, uh, but see, that looks good. I like it. Um, let's see. She doesn't tell you where to, to put the shading so I just follow the picture so I can see it on the left side of this hand a little bit on the underneath of this oh, I'm not in the shot sorry here here um, a little bit along that side so anywhere that you think like I'm gonna do it underneath his hat um, I'm just gonna go to town and I am gonna switch brushes to my good old classic that I love this is my, uh, I put it away, away. I'm sorry, I take so much time doing silly things like this. I'm sorry, okay. I'm not gonna beat myself up. We're gonna be, we're gonna have fun. Okay, I'm just getting it wet right now. Then I'm blotting and I'm doing the exact same thing I just did with the other brush. I'm corner loading and oh, I love this brush so much. The bristles are just softer, they move they're not as thick I, I just I love this brush so much okay so let's go I am super zoomed in I'm gonna come up a little bit there because I will never stay in the shot and I'm just gonna swoop around under this hat I'm gonna go I'm just gonna go right back to that runway where I loaded and I'm gonna put some color down this side of his little hand um, 
a little bit on the I'm just getting picking up color right from where I just had it again because when I that's why I like this brush because it holds so much water I don't have to reload reload like go back to water and reload the brush fully I can just do it um, from that runway because I have right here there's water and paint this is just paint this is water and paint so when I when I feel like this dries out a little bit I can come back here and I'm still picking up water from here as well because I've put it there <laughs> you know now where does this little guy he gets some I'm gonna make his head look round but see how the bristles move they're so bendy and I just love it I don't have to force this brush it just does what I want we're best friends you know I'm gonna go underneath his collar I did get a little more water and I am grabbing a little more paint I'm a, a heavy hand I say it all the time but I don't I like if I'm gonna go I go I don't want a little bit of paint on my brush I want a lot like because sometimes you can refloat 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 a couple two three times to get the desired effect but I don't I'm a one and done girl I just want to get it on there and move on I'm a very fast painter um, he needs it at his little hands there's some right here hopefully I'm in the shot Sorry, and I just stuck my finger in the little, in the baby's float, and you can pick it up. If it's not quite dry, you'll see. So, I didn't pick it up. Um, where else? I think there needs to be a little bit of shading along his, um, I'm going to move to my smaller brush for a sec, because i got to do these little hands. And that's just because I can have, I have more control because I go too big. But still, I'm going right back. I'm not even going to corner load. I'm just going to walk right into this puddle. I'm walking into it and I'm picking up the paint that I have there. It's splitting, so I'm going to get more water. That's just because this brush is, haven't, I haven't had it wet yet. So it, that, it needed another, okay. I'm going to go in here and do his little hand. I put the paint in the corner and I pivot the brush because I still need the water part to touch the sur I can't explain it anymore. I think I explain it really well and if you have any questions, let me know. <laughs> but I think I explain it pretty well. The whys and the, like this one I left a little thing there that I don't like so I'm just going to fix it. Or I could take a Q-tip, my trusty Q-tip, and you don't beat yourself up over this stuff, guys. That still looks good. I'm going to put a little bit um, along his, or, or her, I guess it's a his, um, overalls. Um, I just don't like to leave. When you put the brush down, it will leave a water line. So if you don't fan it out to go to the, you know, to finish it, it'll leave a line there. That's just my, um, let's see. I know that because I've painted for so long, but it doesn't matter. If you're not thinking about that right now, don't think about that. Just focus on getting some type of shading in that area. Don't worry about every little detail of the situation. You know what I mean? All right, he's looking so cute already. How about him? Do we need any more? Okay. Um, I want to see if we're using burnt sienna on the spoon. Let me just go to the spoon. Um, shade with milk chocolate, deep in the darkest areas with burnt umber. See, it's so weird. Why am I using? I don't know because this is more red. All right, let me just follow the directions. Um, it says, deepen shading with burnt umber, float the cheeks with country red. So I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna take a little country red, which I'm running out in so many bottles. This one's pretty much empty. Whoop. 
It was enough for a cheek. And it said deepen with burnt umber. I have asphaltum. Asphaltum. Which is a it's a similar color. It's not burnt umber, but it's similar. And I will darken it, but I kind of like the burnt sienna look, but we'll, I'll show you what it looks like when you go over it with another color. Let's see. It's going to change it. It's definitely going to change the way it looks. So this is the asphaltum just loading the exact same way. And let's see. Right here. Got a little on his face. But look at that. It's, it's a completely different color now. This was a lot more red. Red undertones. Which, I mean, it's fine. This is why I need Renee. Because I don't want to have to think about color choice. Um, where to put things. I just want to paint. I don't want to think like this is my zen this is what m what my serenity crafts has been all about is my time to just be in a zone but look at that omg it's starting to look yeah okay sorry i get very happy it makes me happy now i have not gone back into the water with this brush but because it's look at that you can see all the water on there because it's um the way it's made, this has a longer bristle. It holds, now I'm going back into water. It holds plenty of water in there, so I don't have to keep reloading my brush with the water. I just keep going right back to this runway. I have so much on here. Like, you guys, listen. I, look at it. Look how dark. That's how I roll. I can't. I'm not gentle. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. But I basically did cover up all that, all the burnt sienna. Um, maybe I won't go along his body, but I probably should. I mean, you can still see the shading there, right? And I actually should have put some right here. Kiwi, she's nuzzling into me. She's such a cutie pie. You're my good friend, aren't you? You're a good girl, Kiwi. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. I put a little perch for her in here because if she's not if she's not on my shoulder, really she's just on the back of the chair or on my shoulder. But I put a little perch. Do you want me to put you on your little perch? I, I took one of those like little branches that I don't know those of you who have birds know there's like little branches with a screw on the end that you can like clamp it onto something and I so I clamped it onto my little uh maybe I'll take a picture of her see look this is a little off over here which I don't care can let me come in and show you so right here This line should come up here. Maybe if we highlight right here, but see, maybe I can take it off. Mm, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm being way too specific. But just to create, I want that line to be softer. So, mm, I don't know if there's a way for me to fix that right now. It'll be fine. It's like his thumb is sticking out. All right, look how cool, man. All right, what else? Ooh, that red. So we're going to take, I'm going to use my big brush. He's going to have some juicy cheeks. So we're just going to put a little of that country red, I think it was called, right? Yes. Corner load. Walk away. I walk away from it because this is the strongest paint. I need to get... I need to load it. I can't explain this part, but just watch how I do it. 
And see all that water in there too? Oh man, he's going to be so cute. And I'm going to put the brush down with the edge of the brush right along the top of the... And then I'm going to swivel it down in and tuck it. Which, eh, it was kind of an awkward tuck there. but And it's really not that dark. I may have to do this again. Or I had too much water in the brush. Something's going on. I thought it would be much darker than that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start up here. And then I pivot so that I can tuck the edge of the water line up against his neck. So that I don't leave a straight line coming out. And then I can pull it out on the water that's on the surface. I'll do his other cheek um, in a minute because I want him to have nice rosy cheeks. And we'll do the same thing down here. I'm going to start on the bottom, but see the, the brush is along the edge of the, I can't explain it, but hopefully you, you see what I mean. And I don't need this up in his hair. Like this is the top of his head. This is a, he's looking down like his little face is upside down, you know. I'm being a little too uh, specific. It's, it's a cookie. It's a cookie. So I'll start here this time. And just put a little right there. I'm going to add a little bit more to this side too. I left it. I left the water line there, see? So that's why I just picked it up. That, this side looks so good and the other side's kind of lame. No, it's, it's still bright. Let's see if there were any other places that I missed. Are you okay? What a good girl. I want to darken up his little face cheeks again. When I've taken classes before, um, the teacher generally does not spell it out like this to you guys. So hopefully I'm helping you understand a little better. I'm telling you, I've taken whole classes where there was no instruction. They just say float here, float there. And they don't really tell you how or what they're doing. And I mean, they, I think they just assume that you know how. And that's good. But if I'm paying for a class to take with you, I mean, I can do it on my own at home every day. But if I'm with the teacher in the classroom at that moment, I think they should actually teach us, you know, tell you what to do. Not just go, okay, you're going to float here. You're going to float there. So I know I'm being repetitive, but watching this video is me in the room with you. Okay, so, you know, because you could, I could just say float here, float there, and I'm not telling you how to do it. What's the big deal? I don't know. I, it's just me. Because I've been in so many classes where the teacher didn't help, and I'd be sitting next to someone who was struggling, and I'm like, and I would end up teaching them how to do it. All right. Deepen the shading with burnt umber, float the cheeks, lightly stipple with the lightest area with a mix of honey brown and camel. So I'm going to do that. Honey brown and camel. I think I'm running out of camel. And honey brown is, even though I have all my paints right here, I still can't. Okay. So these two colors, we're doing a mix. I guess I'm going to brush mix. I think I could probably just use one and it would be fine too. But I'm just going to do what it says, Sarah. I am such a rule breaker. That's one of my um, character defects. I need to... Um, I go to Al-Anon, and I love it so much. Those of you... I'm going to put Huey on her perch. Good girl. She likes it over there. Those of you who have watched my channel know, but I go to Al-Anon, and I love Al-Anon. Um... And it's anonymous, so I don't have to tell you any of this, but I like to tell you this, but I am learning so much about myself that I just love. See, there's a little red under here. I'm going to come in, sorry, I interrupt myself, with that, um, 
the burnt umber again and just go under his chin and just fix that a little bit. Anyway, one of my character defects is um, I, I break rules. Like I don't, I think, sometimes I think I know better than the rules would say. You know what I mean? And all it's about is awareness. Like it doesn't make me a bad person or whatever. It's just that once you acknowledge something about yourself, that's the only way you're going to be able to change it, if you even want to change it. Some of our character defects are there for a reason, so that we can, you know, I've had, we, we create them as self-protectant a lot of times or whatever, or, you know, they help you. But, anywho, I digress. I'm just trying to acknowledge and realize when I um, go back into my old ways. Um, so we are going to stipple. Stippling is a technique. I'm going to use the big brush. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch, and this is the Debbie Mitchell stippler. And it's just a, it's got a flat, kind of like a um, stencil brush. The classic stencil brush, only these are soft bristles. And this is actually the best brush that I've ever, you, I could actually get the desired effect with this brush. So sometimes the tools make all the difference. So let's see lightly stipple the gingerbread in the lightest areas with a mix of honey brown and camel. So I'm going to look at the picture. I'm going to take it out of the packaging because it's so shiny. And let's look at this. Um, the lightest areas. So that would be in the middle, maybe on this side of his hand. And and the outside maybe here but like on the his face I'll put it a little bit on his face and that's it like I'm not gonna go crazy and you can't really notice it so it's super subtle so I'm gonna take this no water on the brush first a stipple is kind if I wet the brush it'll muddy everything up it'll just be you want the actual bristles I'll show you what happens to the brush so I'm gonna go into the camel first just a tiny bit and pounce it on my surface. This is loading the brush. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the whatever. I don't even, this might be camel here, I don't know. And I'm going to pounce it over here. Then I'm going to take it off and come back and pick up a little of that right here. And if you can tell, the bristles are all separate. Let's see what this looks like. Because I'm a heavy hand, I'm going to try and be gentle in this, in the lightest areas. I am lightly, lightly. It's a cookie. So, I just want a little texture. I mean, that's super light, but I like it. A little bit here, maybe. See, I pushed a little harder and it went darker, so it's very light touch. I love it though. I'm just going right back to where I kind of loaded the brush. I'm going to put a little on his hand. I do need more paint, so I'm going to have to reload a little bit of this, just a tiny bit, a little bit of that. Then I brush it off. I really look. I'm going to show you. I took it off. I really mashed it out and got it off. Then I'm going to go back to these wet areas and pick it up from the palette. And then I'm going to go back to my piece. Just gently, very gently, and I'm saying that to myself as much as to you because I am a heavy hand. Look, I'm holding it with two fingers. Because I don't, if I put, put too much force down, it'll make a, lump, a clump. That looks so good. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a gentle little cookie look. I th I'm going to reload because I'm running. I'm just putting a little more force. 
because the paint now is off the tips and it's down a little further on the bristle but I like it when it's right on the tips so I just went back into that little um, area where I loaded the brush See, I'm starting to press a little harder. As I use up the paint, I get impatient. Another character defect. And instead of loading my brush again and getting the desired effect, I'll just force it, right? So you have to, you have to do the work to get the result that you want. You have to use the tools the right way. Oh wow, this brush is so fantastic, you guys. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure when you have the right tools. And that's what um, Al-Anon is giving me too. Oh my gosh, I really got some good looking stipples there. The brush just isn't loaded. I'm going back to those two areas, picked it up. I didn't rub it on paper tail and I'm just gonna be gentle. What do you think? I think that's enough, but that is so cool. Just gently. I love it. Oh, I'm not in the shot. I'm so sorry. Okay. You should see this when you do like an, a teddy bear or something. This stippler, okay, it's going in the water. I'm all done. Can't go too crazy. Then it says, paint icing lines with light buttermilk. Paint the eyes and eyelashes and eyebrows with lamp black and white. So I need light buttermilk, black, and white. Light buttermilk. You don't need a ton of paint. Uh, black. I gotta get to the store and get, you know I have not done one bit of Christmas shopping. Not one bit. Actually, I lied. I did get Joe a couple things. You know, my husband's birthday is Christmas. He's a Christmas baby, so. Um, I get, he gets, you know, a little extra. Cause he, he's actually, we get ourselves stuff all year round. We are not without, we have, all we need. There's no need to go crazy at Christmas, but it is his birthday, so I like to get him something. All right, so we're going to do the icing lines, and I want to see if she mentions a brush. She doesn't, because I have this brush called a rigger, and it's another brush that um, Tracy Moreau mentions in her, and it's the faux squirrel, and I don't know. She likes to do line work and stuff with it. I think I'm going to use that for this. It's a little bit of a longer bristle, and it's a little thicker than a liner. Um, anywho, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to really load up my brush in the light buttermilk. And again, to load it, you just pull it, pull a little wetter, slicker puddle out of the main puddle. So now this is paint. This is paint and water. So I know when I go right to here, I already have like diluted paint. It's not going, you know, anyway. I, I guess I'm telling you too much. It's too TMI, Sarah. And then I'm gonna follow my pattern <clears throat> and just let the brush do the work. And I'm gonna put a little, I mean, you could trace this line on, this little icing line, but you don't have to, it's icing. And I'm just gonna let the brush Maybe that's a little too thick. I like a lot of icing now, see? I don't know if I like it. I'm gonna come up on the tip a little bit more and just go. Cause I like it to be thick, thin. But that looks cute. He has a couple down the sides of his face. There's no reason. She just wakes up from a dream and just starts doing that. Oh, it's the trash. All right, she had a reason. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna kinda make it look like it attached to something. I don't know. 
And then over here, And if you don't like the way it looks, you don't have to put icing or whatever. I just want to let you know that. Like, that looks kind of uh, like stripes. I don't like it. I don't really love it. But guess what? I think I'm going to end up taking off the cheek. If I, if I didn't get that while it was still wet, a lot of that cheek could have come off because it's just a float. And I love my cheek. So, and the stippling. So, you can't, once you have, you start putting layers on, you can't really go at it with your Q-tip anymore because you'll get, you know, and I'm switching to a smaller brush because that brush was just a little too thick. And again, less is more. You can always add more. You can, it's harder to take away. So see that again. When I'm, I'm just an all-in person. I need to be patient, let things build, see, like there's a reason. But now when I go in with this one, it's going to be so different from them. It might not work either, but I'm just going to try it. But I like that better. Because you can push-pull. You can put it down and, and get um, it to look thicker and thinner because of the way you work the brush. If you let it, you know, there's a little dark spot on the sun today. No. It's the same old thing. All right. So I'm going to do a little one here, and a little one here. And he has three little tear, like teardrop their, um, strokes. So I'm going to turn my piece over, and I'm going to put these three little, so you're just going to put down the brush and pick up. I'll show you. Well, it's not going to show up with this, but I'll show you in the darker color. So I'm using the rigger. I'm going to load it with red. I'm over here. I got paint and water because you need it to move. Now, I'm going to put it down and then pick up. And you can even, on some brushes, like that's what a liner is for. Let's see if this brush does a better job. So you put it down. Let it be flat and open up and then as you pick up it comes to a point. I, I kind of curved, I didn't mean to. And rounds are even better. Let me see if I have, so she probably used like a number one round for this. You know, like that's the reason she chooses the brushes she chooses because she she's going to get what she wants it to do from that brush. Now a liner is literally, whoops, for lines. Like that's what it's created to do. It's created to just like write my name or something, you know. But it goes thick and thin. Um, let's see, is this a, this is a liner again, but it's not, this is the 10 slash zero and this is a number one. So let me try the number one liner for these strokes. And they're just little, so I can, I can just like, let's see. They go, yeah, I'm going to use this one because you can widen it up and then you pick up and you can get a nicer like tail. All right, so I'm going to use this one, light buttermilk. I'm turning it, um, let's see, I'm turning it over because... Well, I like to pull my strokes toward, toward, away from me, I should say. So let me move this. I'm going to load my brush with the light buttermilk. Oops. I have some type of, okay. So I'm loading, and there's a little bit of red. A little bit of red in my brush still. Um. And you don't want it too wet because it'll turn out see-through. Um, let's see. So here's his little head. He has three strokes. He has one coming from each way and then one in the middle. So let me put the middle one on first. It's actually not upside down. It's going to be perfect. Um, what am I doing? Wait a minute. No, I do need to turn it upside down. Okay, sorry. Get your bearings, Sarah. So I'm going to try to keep it light and soft. 
Um, I just have to, oh geez, I am so confused. This is so bizarre why I can't figure this out. Okay, I got it. It goes up here. Put it down. Good enough. I'm not going to fuss with it. It's a freaking gingerbread guy. And then these two come from here and here. Good enough. That looks gingerbready. It looks icingy, right? They're not perfect at all. I'm not a stroke master. All right, then what else? Black. Uh, <clears throat> I think I'll use that same brush, the number one. Paint the eyes, eyelashes, eyebrows, dots on the body with lamp black, and then I'll need titanium white as well for um, the highlighting. Now, if you wanted to trace on your detail lines, like the little the eyes, I think I can manage two little dots like that. But sometimes, you know, you need to put it on there. So they just kind of have little, um, kind of pointing this way and this way. And they grow on you. And then this little guy, same thing. And what else? She said the buttons on his chest. So there's two little buttons. And you could use your stylus. Am I in the shot? But um, the, it won't dry as fast. There's a button on his um, overalls too, but we're not there yet. This eye is a little big. I'm going to take off. I'm going to try anyway. Oh, no. I want you guys to see how I fix things as well. And actually, I need to stick my head over here because I want to see. I'm being very particular. I'm going to go back to my tiny little brush. And you can put the eyebrows on. And don't make angry eyebrows. Don't make them go in this way. Just little, like... Whatever, he's looking kind of lame. All right, does this guy have eyebrows? Not really. Um, what else? There's no mouth. Um, and then I'll get the, the white out in a minute to put the actual highlight highlights. I think that's it for him. We're going to dot the cheeks and the, um, okay. So the chef hat, we're going to highlight with a brush mix of sand and titanium white. I think after I finish, let's see if I can do this, the um, icing. Shade with cocoa. All right, we're just going to do the chef's hat and then I'll take a break from this video because it's very long. Or maybe I could take a break now. I'm going to, um, I'll do the chef's hat and then I'll um, take a break. Uh, sand and titanium white. So, white and sand, which I think I was going to use. What did I decide to use? Buttermilk? I think we decided to use buttermilk, which is what that's based with. I'm not even going to do a brush mix. I'm just going to do it. See here, I'm breaking rules again. But this is how I do, Sarah. This is how Sarah does it. Um, I got to bring me, a little bit of me to this thing, right? And all we want to do is pop this up by adding the white. I'll show you. It's going to look so cool. All right. Right here. Right here. Hopefully I'm in the shot because I have not checked the camera. Yay. All along these little puffies, right? So on each one of these little puffies, We're going to make it wa uh, white. 
Um, and this one right here. This actually is supposed to come all the way down. Let me take this off. I want to show you something. My tracing line isn't in, doesn't match the cutout. So I'm just going to change that. I'm going to erase it. Got a clean Q-tip. Just make sure that's dry. But see the tracing mark is all the way down. So I'm going to erase that because it wouldn't, I mean, you know, I want it to look like it is supposed to be there. Um, Kiwi's kind of calling me. That's the little noise, the little annoying noise she makes when it's like, hello, I'm here. All right, I'll come get you. Come here. Bye now. Come here. I'm sorry. Then you take, and I'm going to, I'm going to actually start at the bottom right here. And connect that and then there's one right here hi Kate are you getting in the shot putting your little doesn't it look fluffy oh my gosh it looks so fluffy let's see what else it says um, shade with sable brown another brown yeah it's definitely different and I think they all just add to the, I mean, if it was all the same shading, it would look kind of flat. You know, it wouldn't look as good. And that's why she's a professional. Um, let's see. I think I am going to use a little bit smaller brush because I just want to, I don't want to get crazy. It's hard to see, but it def, I can definitely tell. I'm going to flip my paper towel because I have tons of, marks on it and we need to create a little band here so I'm going to shade up against the top of this band that this hat band that's holding is I'm going to stick the color up there wow it's way too dark I like it though, but it's not subtle. That's not me. I am not subtle. It's way too dark. I think it's just because I d didn't have enough water on my brush. But, I mean, it looks good. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Oh, thank you. All right, and then I'm just going to go back into my um, runway because I don't want it to be too dark. Uh, see, actually, it goes around there and down. And I can... I don't know if I'm in the shot. Yes, I am. It's just hard to see um, on the picture. Actually, we're going to cover that with um, holly, a little holly sprig anyway, so don't get crazy. Don't get crazy. Man, I am just overloading this brush, though. Like, I have way too much color. So I always, sometimes you have to walk away from it. That's another technique. That's another tool I use in life. Just walk away. I didn't really need that there. I don't know. I decided to try it and see what it would look like, but she doesn't really have it like that. I mean, she kind of does. Like here. Let's see. I'll just do my own thing. Kiwi, you are so sweet. She's just preening herself on me. She's so cute. I mean, it definitely looks floofy. This looks off too. This line, I don't know, but we're gonna put the spriggle there anyway. It's fine. See how like his hat, it should be over here more. Like, but that's just part of the drawing. 
I don't know, it seems like it should be over there. Um, I'm going to go back to the white and just kind of perk that up a little where I put Yeah, I'm just getting crazy. You should take breaks for sure. If you're feeling any type of fatigue, it's just better to um, take a break. All right, so that is what that looks like at the moment. Not thrilled, but whatevs. It'll look good as a whole, see? It says, paint the lines of the band with sable brown. You know what, while we have that white out though, I just wanna do the little, the little highlight dots. So on our eyes, I like how she just puts a little highlight dot at the top right corner. And she'll put a little highlight there. And just brings it to life. Come on. What else did it say? Dot the high. Oh, there's cheek dots. So let's see where they are. They're just kind of right here. A little cheek dot. And then a little cheek dot right here. See, those are the things that get me excited. That makes you feel good. Okay. Um, all right, we're done that. Now we have to add, paint the, the band with, paint the lines on the band with sable brown. So that's that same color that we just used to shade. I'm going to get it a little wetter and put it on my liner brush and make little stripies. And I'm just following my pattern because they're not traced on here, but you can wing a line. It's not like you need to have uh, them traced on. So just put lines. Black green, I'm gonna nude nude. I'm gonna need black green for those uh, pine needles. Paint three pine limbs and the first layer of pine needles with black green. There's X's on the hat. Ooh, with sable brown, we're gonna also put X's on the hat. Why don't you oh, because we're gonna oh no, I wanna put the X's excuse me, right now. So again, I'm not, I don't need to trace all my little X's on, but she has lines going across and down. Can you see that? I'm sorry. If I don't look up, I'm not in the shot, so I'm going to come up. I know it's nice to have the zoom, but they're just X's. It's nothing major at the moment. And I just try to evenly space them without them looking too um, stencily. Like let them look painterly. Let them look like they were hand painted. This liner brush is, does not have a good tip. I'm not loving this curve at all. I could have done much better on that. But I forgive me. Self forgiveness is important too. All right, so we got that. And look, none of this is the main thing. That's the thing. All of these together, it's going to look so cute. Like, I really don't like this one. This one's too fat. I don't like them. The lines were just too thick. They didn't match. Um, and then black green. I'll put another one on. Okay. Black green, and we're going to do the pine needles and... Much better. Uh, so there are three, and you could trace these on, but you don't need to. I'm telling you, you can figure it out. Three little, and I'm just loading that. Let me, I'm going to try one of my other liners, this one. 10 slash zero. I'm just getting the paint a little wetter so that it can flow like ink off the brush. And I'm going to just put three. One. Ooh, I like this one. This one's very pointy. Two. And one's going to go this way. Three. Oops. Three. Oops. 
that didn't work. All right? And then she just has Yeah, it's not really staying loaded very well. This is the first layer, she said, of pine needles. So we're going to put another color on here, which looks really cool once you do that. So that looks pine needle-y. Then we're going to do... Dot the centers of the X's with country red. Ooh, paint a few strokes of pine needles with Hauser light green to highlight. So here's Hauser light. And then we're going to put little red dots in the centers of those X's. So that's cool. Um, I am on autopilot. Sorry, guys. I always turn the piece to make it easier. However you feel more comfortable, that's how you should do it. Turn the piece if you can, especially when you have the opportunity to have such a small piece like this. Sometimes you're painting a big cumbersome thing that you can't move. I'm just moving these brushes out of the way. Um, we're gonna do little tiny dots on the in the middle of the X's with this red. Wow, that's going to be cool. Let me go in. I could use a stylus, but I'll just use my brush. I just loaded it. That is so tiny, I don't even know if it counts. No, that this is very unlike me too. I usually make a big dot. You can totally notice it though. I mean, subtle, but you you know it's there. Oh boy, the details are so much fun. I've always loved the details. All right, um, I think there's going to be three little more dots. Let's see. Paint a few strokes. I got that. Dot the berries with country red. Dot each berry with a highlight of titanium white. And I am going to use my stylus for the berries because I then they will dry round. And then we'll take a little break. And I'll come back with another. Um, I, mean, I guess this one could be good. I'll, I'll keep moving, but I'm going to end this video. And then I'll um, come back and keep moving. Because I could paint all day, and I think I will. When you do a dip dot, you need a nice fresh puddle of paint. So I am going to put out a little bit more paint to get a nice dip dot. Because if not, it won't make that nice uh, round shape that we want. So... One... Two, three, and I didn't want them to blend together, but look, they look like, okay. And then I'm just going to highlight those with a little teensy tiny dot, dot of white after. So for right now, look how good he looks already. All right, so for the next part, I'm going to come back and we're going to move on to the spoon. And then the apron, which is blue. So I'll do the spoon and the apron and the cookie cutter probably in the next part. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.